I gotta tell you this morning, Lauren comes in my room. And she says, Mom, today's gonna be a big day. I don't know. I really say it is. And she says, Yeah. Libby might come over. Oh, yeah, they'll come in my and help the pigs. And I'm gonna ride Chisholm. I can't wait. I'll see you later. And she left. And then I left with her, wait, doing her rodeo wave. Aww. In the arena. Girl is so cute. Welcome to the Now Podcast, episode 25. Yeah, I feel like that's a big one. There's no like, this is nice. It is nice. Yeah. Just having the two of us on here. We are no. going to mix it up today. No yeah. guest on the pod today because da, 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 da. it's time to ask the general. Oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> yep. You're getting grilled by me uh, this time. Yeah. Okay. In the hot seat. How do you feel about that? I'm um, pretty good. I think so. Yeah. It's your turn. It, you know, it's, like, uh, it's usually not about me. So <laughs> let me get my, my, uh, your game, my, on. my about me cap on. I, I see that you're lacking coffee. I think you're, that's a bad move. Oh, is that a coffee in there? This is two shots of espresso. Actually. And, and uh, um, for those on YouTube watching, you can see her coffee on the side of her cup. All dripped down the edge <laughs> of her Hello Sunshine cup. You got me this. I did. You remember? I busted it out today. I was imagining a cocktail in there in the no, pool. No, no, no cocktail. No. Iced coffee for you. Yeah, iced coffee for me. Something else for me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's get into this. Okay. So we've got some questions for you. Okay. I have some questions for you. Okay. Do you know the answers already? Probably. <laughs> Probably. For most of them. Uh, but I think I do. But we'll see. We'll find out. All right. So let's start with the obvious one, right? Why sure. Why the general? Why does everyone call you the general? I feel like some of our listeners are probably wondering that. Mm. Well, the background story on that is when we worked in the bootjack office, when we shared bootjack, we shared Twist Realty with ranch fence which is owned by your husband jared yes. which i went to school with way back in the day um i think i think it came from me uh at one point helping him with a proposal mm. and i told him that i it sounded like can we swear on this one or should i i mean let's go the, for it maybe our editor will the, believe Yep, no. that's a good idea. It's because it's kind of important. I remember him saying, like, what do you okay. think? And I said, I think that sounds like <laughs> I think there's no does it make I gave him the the cold hard truth and I just remember him being like, Oh my gosh, like okay, general. And then you ran with general and then everybody just started calling me the general. Yeah. I mean, I think it has to do with your mannerisms too, more than just that. <laughs> Which I was raised with a United States Marine Corps Marine. So from the time I was birthed till the time I left, which was almost 18 years, when you're around that intensity, you can't probably help to avoid it imprinting on you. I've noticed. So there it is. I've noticed, General. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you have all the discipline. Yeah. Well, actually, okay, let's, let's, let's get into that. So discipline. Yes. Routine. Yes. Structure. Yes. Uh, those are three words I came up with to describe you. Yes. So why are those important to you? And how do you think it elevates your business? So there's probably some safe, some feeling of safety with all of that secu- that discipline, I imagine. If, if I was analyzed by some type of therapist, that if I like have all this structure and it's all neat and tidy, then I'm good and I'm safe and maybe. So... Um, it makes me feel good to have that. Um, so that was part one of your question. Yeah. And how, how have you used that in your business? Cause I'm a little more chaotic than you are. <laughs> yeah. And I watch you and you're just yeah. so good. With yeah. I mean, just time blocking. It's, it's this, um, relentless pursuit of excellence to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. If I had to like drill it down and. As a result, I'm constantly like, okay, where am I at with this? Where am I at with that? And how 
can I be better? And where am I missing the mark? And where do I need help? And how am I going to get it? That's all really great. Mm -hmm. um, but then your brain doesn't ever <laughs> shut down. So there's two different levels of intensity, um, right? I don't make sense. I don't think anyone that knows us would describe us as intense. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I'm all, uh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank well, you. and I think too, for you, outsider looking in, you know, you can, you can be disciplined. You can make, you can get your, be good at writing your to-do list, scheduling your time, but it's all down to the execution, right? I think, I don't remember what the stat is, like it's high, 80 or 90% of people can do the plan, but then they don't execute it. Mm. Yeah. Or follow through. And I think that's something that I've noticed that you're really good at. Because the thing is, is that if you, if you plan and you execute, right. Mm -hmm. And if it works, then you know that if that works and I can do that with this thing over here, right. Rinse and repeat. Yeah. Even if it's a different goal. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you're trying to lose weight, you're like, okay, I've tried X, Y, and Z. And these tactics that I deployed worked, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm going to do the same thing in this field, you know, okay. it's it's this, it, it, if you don't execute and reflect and pivot and do all the things, then it's just not going to work. Along with your weight, how much weight did you lose? I can just 40 remember. pounds. 40? Wow. It was 40 pounds. In fact, this time last year, there were two things that I did um, one was my fishing license. Did I even tell you this? I don't think so. I went to get my fishing license renewed and they said, is everything accurate on here? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm so used to saying everything's the same. And I'm like, oh, not that. <laughs> not that <laughs> way. Not, not that way, you know? And the lady looked at me. I'm like, you can change that. I earned the right. <laughs> Drop that middle digit yeah, down. <laughs> and the same thing with my CCW license. Mm. They were like, is that all accurate? And I'm like, not that. <laughs> Wow, that's so, yeah. I was good. forty pounds. Yeah, wow. And you've maintained it for mm -hmm. quite a while now, actually, which is, in my opinion, almost harder. <laughs> it's not easy than losing it. Yeah. All right, so let's pivot a little bit to your background. Yeah, career. Yeah. Um, we've mentioned on some of the podcasts about you being top one percent. Yep. What? Where? What industry? Where did you work? What I area? Pharmaceuticals. Uh, in Bakersfield, good old Kern County. Um, you know, and it was not easy, but I knew, gosh, I knew that, um, I knew that I was going to be a winner. <laughs> not surprised. Not, I was not, I mean, that, that never, um, that, that never, I never doubted myself with that. I just never thought it would be that big, that much of a winner. <laughs> yeah. When I got that phone call, I was all, I mean, my knees slightly buckled. Well, it's a big deal. It One percent in the world. Like, how many people worked for that company? Well, in the country at that time, we had about six thousand agents yeah. in the United States. So, yeah, I represented the United States. It was a little bit like the United Nations in France. So legit, it was like the U.S. had a little section, and I had the the headphones to hear it in English, and we had the United States flag that we were waving and so it was so it was an all was, expense paid all trip expense right plus one plus one so I, your aunt right yeah. went with you yeah yep so I was promoted into oncology sales and moved to San Francisco and I was living in the city and I got a phone call from the assistant to the president of our company mm -hmm. and and I was like you don't you don't get a call from an assistant from the president of the company. And she put me on hold to connect me to him. And he's like, oh, I heard you got promoted. And I'm like, okay. I said, with all due respect, I have to believe that you have better things to do and to, you know, call me and congratulate me on my promotion. And he's like, well, true. I'm just wondering if you have a passport. And at this time, I thought I was going to win a trip to Mexico. Uh -huh. So I, again, I'm like, Yes, I have a passport. You know, I hate off Mexico. You don't get phone calls when you win regional trips. Right. You know what I mean? right. And then that's when he said, you're going to Paris with a, you know, your top 1%. And I'm all, I literally, my knees buckled. And then they just started sending me stuff. I got roses. I got like 
all the stuff about Paris and Italy sent to my apartment in San Francisco. And it was like red carpet rolled out. Wow. Oh my gosh. And then he came back and you're probably flying high. Oh my gosh. It was a trip of a lifetime. It was crazy. It was fun. So how many years were, did you do the pharma? Four? Uh, no, no, no. Um, I got into pharma. I was with Sanofi for almost six years. Um, like eight years. Yeah. Maybe a little bit longer. And I finally talked you into getting into real estate. <laughs> well, I had, I had abandoned ship on pharma to be a mommy. Um, and then I met you and you were like, come. And I'm like, no, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're relentless. You didn't stop. No, I'm a winner as well, right? And I see another one <laughs> Yeah, in you. So, you know, for those that don't know, Michelle was part of my leadership team for a long time and and had multiple roles with mm -hmm. marketing and brand manager and helped, um, you know, helped guide all of our team. Basically, I was going to say herd cats or whatever <laughs> for a number of years before you actually got licensed. Yes. And you were more behind the scenes management versus production. Mm -hmm. Now you're doing some more production. Yep. How's it going? How are you? Any of your tricks of the trade from your prior career that you're like, oh, this is, I'm doing this. That worked there. Your whole rinse and repeat you talked about. Yeah. Any of that going on right now? Yeah, for sure. I don't even want to like spill the beans. You got to get all the beans. Fast. We need some gold nuggets in this one, right? Well, I think. One of the things that I did really, really well at in pharma, actually in all my sales um, experience, is being the connector. Mm. We talked about that mm -hmm. um, at our event. Um, so I'm thinking about the fact that now that we are aligned with EXP Realty, it really, there's so many great things about that business decision that you made. But one of the things that it allows me to do is think about ways that I can utilize EXP's international business model because it's international. Mm -hmm. It's This is not, you know, just specific to the United States. But how can I use that to help our clients here locally and all over? All over. And so I'm really excited to 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 work on that. And I think that that's an opportunity for us. It's a relationship building on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is pretty cool, especially with us having had an independent brokerage for mm -hmm. 11 years. Mm -hmm. We didn't have those kind of connections no. or support. Um, so it is pretty eye opening to have 90,000 agents just amongst the yeah. that you can you know, I'm, we needed a, a lender for a really specific property. Oh, let's go ask mm -hmm. like that. Or, you know, an agent in a certain area. We also have Pro Insight that we're members of, which mm -hmm. is a great referral network. So, I mean, imagine being the preferred real estate brokerage for a large international organization. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like an employer that has... Um, employees all across the country and worldwide and to partner with folks like ourselves imagine imagine that <laughs> does that make pretty sense? cool so and I have no problem picking up the phone and calling people and saying what are you doing to help your employees win in the real estate market mm -hmm. and how can we partner with you to help them do that you are definitely not afraid to pick up the phone no and if someone walks by that office, you're out there talking to them. Correct. So newer agents in the market right now, because you're a newer agent, right? On paper, yeah. What do you tell them? They're not. You're. You have. The the thing is, is that it's almost. It's. It's. I have to like remind myself that it's. It's not easy for everybody. I had to do this with with your team, mm -hmm. our team, however you want to say it, because I constantly sat up here with you, and there would be people out there doing nothing. Yeah. Just doing nothing and look, getting, being busy. Do maybe. What? Like, but not shopping not on Amazon. Growing their business. I mean, you've, you've got to my daughter would come and hear me like, your people are doing nothing. I watched that. Am I wrong? Sometimes. Most of the time. Anyways, I'm not going to digress, but 
I have to remind myself that new people, even Carissa, she's a new agent. She's never been in sales. She was a teacher. She's in, she's in marketing. Um, so I have to remind myself that not everybody is me. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you have to be me to succeed. There Absolutely. Are, there are tons of people out there that aren't even on social media and they're killing it. So I can't say you have to pick up the phone. Um, what I will say is I feel like it's a, you're missing the mark if you're not doing that in some capacity, because if you're not at least calling your sphere, right? Right. And nurturing those relationships and your sphere could be like, I was telling you, I called Autumn Hutching yesterday. He was just the president of parent club and someone that is in the community. And my first, one of my first clients that, I mean, if you're not telling people like that saying like, who do you know? I have a house or whatever, then you're missing the mark Mm -hmm. in my opinion. I agree. And I think, so I actually was having um, a glass of wine with a top producer, Laura, if you're listening, (laughs) Laura Mather. And we were talking about this as far as the relationship building and needing to be comfortable with picking up the phone, not even to prospect with leads, but to talk to your fellow realtors Mm -hmm. and be like, hey, on your listing that that sold me, you know, I had multiple offers. Mm -hmm. How many? What was the tone? What was it like? Or, you know, I'm, hey, I'm sending over an offer. Here's, here's the scoop. Not like everything by text Mm -hmm. or your voicemail's full. Pet peeve of ours, pet peeve, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just so important with all the changes coming down the pipe here in a month Mm -hmm. with our paperwork, we as realtors are going to be negotiating our income. Mm -hmm. Concessions will be coming via conversations and negotiations. So I think... It's a, to your point, you've got to get over that in order to, to succeed. And people, and you're almost like, if you're not calling the people that you know, um, like shame on you because they're, they're expecting you to, do you know what I mean? Like literally, like if you have a cousin, an, an uncle, an aunt, a distant cousin of an old roommate that I reached out to last week that, by the way, her sister's now the pre- the principal at Yosemite High School. Oh, <laughs> there you go. That's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. oh, if you're not picking up the phone and just saying hi and reconnecting with people, then they're not, it's like shame on you, number one. And then number two, no one knows who you are. So you could put all the stuff on social media you want. You could send all the text messages you want. But that doesn't mean that it's going to translate to people knowing who you are and what you're doing. No, I agree. Um, I was listening to Jared James' podcast this morning, and he mentioned on there that people only remember three in an industry. Three doctors. If if you had asked them to list some recommendations, three attorneys, three realtors. If that. We all have more than three realtors in our community. Yeah. How how are you going to be one of those three? Yeah. And then they don't don't even know, like, look at how long I worked for you. Mm -hmm. Like all the phone calls I'm making, they're like, oh, we didn't even know you were in a realtor. Yeah. So how would they know? Right. (laughs) Unless they're following your social, but it's not that everyone sees every single post or every single story. Yeah. Consistency. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with that for sure. Healthy Lending Company. We help guide clients towards healthy home ownership. Lending doesn't have to be confusing. We make it easy to understand. Find options that work for you. Let's see. Let's move on. Let's let's do something not so work related. I want to know. I think I know the answer to this. But I'm going to see what you're going to say. Guilty pleasure. Mmm. You totally know the answer to this. Okay. <laughs> and you, specific to food. Let's say yes. Or like a snack. Yes. Is it a snack. Yes. <laughs> what i'm thinking i like an icy a cherry icy icy yes slurpy whatever um and like a hot cheeto <laughs> talkie right it's talkie. well it's been hot cheeto oh like, either one to me is so disgusting I, they're so gross and i bought Ugh. a bag for lauren for vacation because we're going on vacation and i might have been eating them last night and Bo looked at me and goes remember when you asked me to intervene if i saw you doing something you shouldn't and I'm like, yeah, he goes, this would be that moment. And I'm like, thanks, babe. He's good. He job. never does that. That's good. 
save you from yourself. You took the bag away. I remember stopping a couple times over the years yeah. and you'd get those. And oh, yeah. I don't even think you could pay me to eat. They're good. I don't like Cheetos. I don't like they're the they're, they're terrible. I have my own things, but uh, that is not one of them. I'll take the slushy though, but it'd be a Coke slushy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I was right about that. Mm -hmm. All right. How about this? How many countries have you lived in? Lived in. Lived in or and or oh, where yeah. you born? Oh, yeah. Well, only two countries because it was Pakistan and the U.S., right? Yeah. I don't know. So I'm making sure. Yeah. Pakistan and the U.S. So two countries. And then mm -hmm. where was I born? Long Beach. In fact, okay. I just looked at my birth certificate with my dad. This past so week. then when you lived in Pakistan, you were really little. Uh, two years old? Or do I remember in that? Um, I think it was like, yeah, three, three, four. Because we came back to the States and I started kindergarten. Okay. So, yeah. Interesting. And I do actually have two memories. I don't, I don't really know if that how that's possible. But I remember my father killing cockroaches on the wall Ooh, this flip-flop <laughs> nice childhood memory of pakistan <laughs> yeah okay okay yeah. Well, uh -huh. well, anyways it on. moving on <laughs> love us in pakistan <laughs> yeah okay well no cockroaches on the wall in mariposa and we were evacuated like twice but i don't remember that life says the military yeah well, child trauma well, okay. So I wanted, I want to definitely think we should hit on this if you're comfortable yeah. with it. Um, I want to talk about MS. Oh, okay. So, you know, you know, you're very vocal on your social media. When were you diagnosed? And how, this is a main question I have. How do you manage a chronic illness and a thriving career? Because I think I could be wrong. I don't have a chronic illness mm -hmm. unless you count scoliosis. And I think some people might think it's an either or mm. scenario. Mm. Diagnosed 23, misdiagnosed at 19. So basically, I don't really know anything different, right? So I had my first symptoms when I was 19 in Burbank. I was out having drinks with some friends and my legs went numb. And they diagnosed me with fibromyalgia, which was a mess. And then the symptoms resolved and... When I was 23, they came back. So essentially from 19 to 47, how many years is that? A lot. A lot. So I don't really know anything different, mm -hmm. I guess, in my like adult life in terms of living with it mm -hmm. and working. <laughs> right? Right, right. Like you have to work right. to survive. So in some capacity. Um, so it's never really been either or for me because you had it too young you've, yeah i mean that's like all i know it's not like i was diagnosed later in life although i don't think that that's even if i was i don't think it's an option mm -hmm. um granted the first 10 years of the diagnosis were pretty significant and i was not well so i suspect i could have 100 percent not been as successful as i was in fact in the pharmaceutical industry when I was working in that capacity, I didn't tell my my leadership that I had MS because I felt like I got to like go prove what I can do without them knowing what I'm dealing with. So I kept it a secret from people that I worked with. For how long? When I first got into pharma the first year and I didn't wow. even tell my manager. And I remember telling him when I, when I basically made him, I was always like, I want to, I want to do well so that the people that I work for do well. That was always kind of my mindset. Like if I show Courtney that I can help her succeed, if I show Todd, if I show Michelle, like if I make them look good, mm -hmm. then ultimately it's reciprocal, right? right like right. you'll want me to succeed if I help you succeed. And I just remember one year, the first year telling Todd, he was like, holy shit, like you of all people have an excuse not to, to work and in fact, of the 12 people on my team, mm -hmm. you know, you're the, you're the top, top producer. Do you know what I mean? So I think I just always, in my mind was never going to let it, um, get in the way of me kicking ass. Yeah. Period. It just wasn't an option. Not an option. I don't know if I answered your question, but 
No, I mean, I, I think so. I can see it now. Yeah. To this day. Yeah. I think you you probably, I would imagine, over the years have gotten better at recognizing maybe some of your limits if you're going to, you know, be exhausted or, yeah. you know, there's obviously, yeah. you've managed it yeah. very well with stamp through Stanford. Yeah. And well, infusions. I think um, there have been times where I have not felt as well as I do and I and right now in this stage of my life I can tell you that the the weight loss and the eating is mm -hmm. like 100 percent the most important for everybody for everybody if anybody's listening to this like it doesn't have to take a chronic illness for you to recognize that you have to take care of your what you're eating okay right how much you're eating and what you're doing to take care of your physical well-being. So if it's walking, swimming, whatever, 100%, if you don't have some kind of concept of... Some kind of outlet physically. Something. Yeah. No, I agree. And it ties into your mental. Yep. Your mental state. Yep. Um, you know, de depression, all that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of correlations. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I would say we're going to end this on this question here okay this one you might have to think about oh no. maybe not i don't know okay fast forward five years yes where do you see yourself Ooh, that's easy so i physically i don't know the answer to that just let's just start with that because um what i do know for sure is i want my husband retired so he's been living his whole career in law enforcement and he's a he's a diabetic and I want him to be retired and live his best life with me. So that being said, Lauren's going to be in college. Yeah. Crazy to think that. Yeah. I actually want to and and smoke. She'll, I want him retired and I want, um, I want to be somewhere where we can logistically be able to travel easily and, um, get to a doctor easily so it's been texas as you know mm -hmm. um so we'll see i don't know for sure what i'm not i'm not sure could be could be could be wherever but we're going to definitely be he's going to be retired i will not be retired because i'm going to be working with you still you better be <laughs> i'm not retiring in five yeah years. i'm not retiring in five years <laughs> i would like to not be doing um production mm -hmm. in five years um so but i want us to be in a place where our organization is plentiful across the country um and doing some traveling with you mm -hmm. and um so i think i think from a professional perspective i see you and i um you know where we want to be yeah which is you living in texas and we we'll likely see. still in cali yeah although i would hope to have a beach house First the pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then maybe the beach house. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Here's the thing about the, I've told Bo this recently. I, and this will be good that we have this recorded because we can look back on this. Okay. It's like a time capsule. A little bit. For some reason, my gut is telling me that Lauren's going to end up in California. I know. There's a lot of colleges here that are really good. Yeah. And she is a Cali girl. Um, what I mean by that is that she likes the beach. She mm -hmm. likes the ocean. She likes the weather. She likes the people. And I don't know that while I think she's courageous to go somewhere else, I think yeah. she has the courage to do that. And likes an adventure. And likes an adventure. I just don't know. That being said, if she's in California, <laughs> you might still be here. I'm like, hun, we might need to get a condo in Carlsbad. <laughs> There you go. Do you know what I need? Well, we'll share the beach house. It's not like we're going to use it enough for one of us. So there, there you go. We yeah. got our plan. I only say <laughs> that and I told him, I'm like, I was telling him this the other day. I said, you know, I'm pretty realistic in that Lauren and I are so close, right? Mm -hmm. That I don't know if I, like, if she says, hey, mom, I want to have dinner with you on Friday. Like when yeah. Bella goes to college in San Luis, if yeah. she says, mom, I, I want you to come or I need you to come. Yeah. Which, I, I'm only a few sure. hours away. You're only a few hours away. Right. Right. So you could literally go down there on a Friday mm -hmm. and spend the weekend with her. Could I get on a plane and do the same thing? I could, but I don't know. It's like a six hour flight. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I don't know if she's in California. 
I don't know, might keep you longer. I, I, I'm there's the American Posa, that mm. much, you know, but you know, you don't you, be happy that I'm f- planting the seed of, that it may not be five years, you know, um, Texas if she's in California. Okay. So I know my campaign yeah. to Lauren. <laughs> We'll have her visit Bella and, quite and often. At here's school. the thing is this, I have not <laughs> said this to, like, to her. I don't know. Like, I don't want to make her feel like she needs to do anything. I've never wanted her to feel that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've never been like, you're going to be in California or anywhere. So I don't, she can do whatever she wants. I don't even care. Um, it's just, I'm pretty realistic that if she is in New York City, then I don't know. I don't see you being in New York City, but we'll no, see. I, we'll see. I don't know. I'm just saying. We'll okay. see. The All five right. years thing physically, I'm not sure. It will not be in Mariposa because we want to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. We'll take that. We'll take that. That's All right. Any, any words of wisdom to leave uh, our listeners with as we wrap up our 25th Ooh. episode? Words of wisdom. You know, 47 years old and chronic illness i just don't want people to ever think that that they can't do whatever they want to do and even if they don't know what it is um that at the end of the day you are the creator of your destiny so um i think having some foundation of faith is so important i didn't find that until much later in life Mm -hmm. um all the people that I know that are cool and loving and compassionate individuals are all really grounded in their faith. Um, so I think I would close with that. I think it's super important in some capacity. And if you don't know how to find your way there, like just lock arms with someone <laughs> um, because that I think is is so important and it will pivot you into where you need to be mm-hmm. and if you don't know where that is you'll find it by having some faith okay we'll end on that yeah have some faith and know that you can do it mm-hmm. you can do it I can do it 47 if you can do it anyone can do it anybody can do it I mean you have to do the work. You gotta do the work. You gotta do the work. If, not, if you don't have it, if you don't, if you're, if you're scared, get over it. If you're scared, <laughs> then you're, then that's good. Actually, yeah. you should be because the last thing you want to be, be is comfortable. Yeah. If you're scared and you can't like be um, comfortable with failing, then I don't know. You just have to keep doing it. Yeah. Over but, and over. Fail forward. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's well, crap. people can find you. Ask the general. Yep. On Instagram, all things twist. Now Nation. Now Nation is our organization. If anyone wants more information on yeah. working with us, yeah. Um, if you're liking what you're hearing on our podcast, please give us a review and share yeah. it with your friends. Make this worthwhile for us to keep doing these weekly episodes because I know we're enjoying it. We've got some really great speakers or excuse me, guests coming up mm-hmm. in the next couple months. Yep. So anyway, we'd appreciate five star and reviews and sharing and all that fun stuff. All right. Have a good one.